Hey, this is Zach Plopper, Senior Environmental Director of the Surfrider Foundation. Welcome to this episode of The Current, where we'll be talking about Surfrider's work to address climate change. Today, I'm joined by Stephanie Seekich Quinn, Senior Manager of Surfrider's Coast and Climate Initiative. Welcome, Stephanie. Hey, Zach. So over the past year, Surfrider's had a lot of success working on policies to help address climate change impacts on our coastlines. At any given moment, we have five to 10 local, state, and federal bills that call for better sea level rise planning and nature-based solutions, such as establishing protected areas and restoring carbon storing mangroves, salt marsh, and seagrass meadows, also known as blue carbon ecosystems. We had an awesome 2022 Coastal Recreation Hill Day where over 150 surfrider activists from 26 states met with 160 congressional offices, urging them to take bold climate action. During Hill Day, we met with the White House to discuss how our coast and ocean are at the center of the climate crisis. In August, we saw President Biden sign the Inflation Reduction Act, which invests nearly $370 billion into climate action and coastal resilience. This is the largest climate investment in U.S. history with a goal of reducing carbon emissions by 40% by 2030. The legislation carves out substantial money to improve climate resilience along our coastlines and directs investments towards tribes and disadvantaged communities that are disproportionately impacted by extreme weather and other climate change impacts. Unfortunately, there are trade-offs in this bill. It includes the potential for new offshore oil and gas leases in the Gulf of Mexico and Alaska. Now we need to monitor and guide how the Inflation Reduction Act translates to real climate action, and we need to fight the bad projects along the way. We're also still advocating for the Ocean-Based Climate Solutions Act. And this is a bill that would ban offshore oil drilling, help local communities adapt to sea level rise, and invest in coastal resilience and blue carbon ecosystem conservation. So Surfrider is doing a lot of great work around policy to protect our coasts against climate change. And we've seen success this year, but we're also making huge advancements on the ground through nature-based solutions. Stephanie, can you tell us about some of this work? Yeah, well, let's back up a little bit and define what nature-based solutions are. So these are on the ground actions that leverage the power of nature to protect our coastal communities from extreme weather events, chronic erosion, and climate change impacts such as sea level rise. And as you mentioned before, these blue carbon ecosystems, which can be mangroves, seagrass meadows, or salt marshes, act as the first line of defense against sea level rise to protect our coastal communities. But at the same time, they're extremely efficient for pulling carbon from the air. And in fact, these blue carbon ecosystems can pull five times the amount of carbon from the air compared to land trees and store it in the soil around them. So they're just fantastic for defense for our coastlines and taking that carbon and sequestering it. So what is Surfrider doing to protect these blue carbon ecosystems? So for years, Zach, we have been working to protect and conserve and restore these habitats, as well as coastal dunes. They provide a critical buffer for our coastal communities. And as we saw with Hurricane Ian recently, communities that do not have natural dunes or mangroves in front of them experienced more severe impacts. But let's boil it down a little bit to what we're doing around the country. So for years, we've been planting dune grass plants in Florida, all around the coastal dunes there. Most recently, as you mentioned, we had a huge victory where we stopped bad legislation that would have actually weakened restrictions to protect our coastal wetlands and blue carbon ecosystems. Um, in Puerto Rico, which again is still recovering from these two strong hurricanes, we're working to restore mangroves and we're also working with communities to restore in different shoreline habitats in the area. And then finally, just a really quick example, we're doing tons of dune restoration in the Gulf Coast and on the East Coast. And as an example, our Cape Fear chapter in North Carolina takes Christmas trees and recycles them and builds them into the base of the dune to build a really strong dune system that actually can really withstand impacts. And for example, Hurricane Matthew a couple years ago came into that part of North Carolina and the area where we had built up the dune with recycled Christmas trees was intact and the adjacent dune next to it had serious impacts to it. So these are just a few of the on the ground examples of what we're doing to protect both coastal dunes and blue carbon ecosystems. Thanks, Stephanie. That's all really exciting and desperately needed. There's a lot of growth in store for Surfrider. 
uh, around our nature-based solutions. One opportunity we're exploring is to protect more coastline through what are called living shorelines. And this is a combination of making better land use decisions on our coasts by moving vulnerable infrastructure away from the beach and replacing that with natural habitats such as sand dunes. We've helped lead efforts to do this in Ventura, California, where I live, as well as in Cardiff down in San Diego in Southern California. And both projects are global examples of what can be done to improve coastal resilience while maintaining public access to the beach and restoring coastal ecosystems. We're really excited to expand this work to other parts of the country. And we're gonna be tracking the significant investments of the Inflation Reduction Act and other federal legislation to make sure that they are directed in the most impactful way. Anything else coming up, staff? You know, Zach, I just want to reiterate that the bottom line is we have to act on climate change now. There's no longer time to wait, but fortunately, Surfrider is well equipped to do this. In 26 different states around the country, we either have chapters or clubs that are working on the ground to protect our ocean beaches and waves from climate change impacts. And we're all working together to ensure that we have accessible and resilient coastlines in the future. Thank you for joining me, Stephanie, and thank you all for tuning in to this episode of The Current. To learn more about Surfrider, to get involved with your local chapter, and to become a member, please visit surfrider.org.